Hello everyone. In this lab, we will learn how to determine the concentration of total coliform indicator bacteria using the membrane filter technique. Before we start the lab, there are several safety procedures that must be followed. First, proper PPE must be worn. This includes closed-toed shoes, a lab coat, safety gloves, wearing safety goggles, and making sure any loose hair is tied back or put in a bun. Also, the primary effluent used in this lab is a biohazard. They can potentially contain pathogenic organisms. Any individuals who may be in contact with small children or those with suppressed immune systems should take extra precaution. Glass bottles have the potential to cut fingers. Always hold them in the middle. Be careful of the fire. Keep distance with the alcohol burner and be careful not to burn your hand and hair. Extinguish it with a cap provided and do not attempt to blow it out. Always use tape labels. Do not write directly on the glass bottles. The number of organisms in the sample is very high, from 10 to the power of 6 to 10 to the power of 9 per milliliter sample. Some are beneficial and some are potentially disease-causing or pathogenic. It is very difficult to measure the concentration of these pathogenic organisms, so a coliform indicator is used in the analysis. The concentration of the coliform reflects the sanitary quality of the water. To determine coliform concentration, we will use the serial dilution method. This technique includes three steps. First, making serial dilution, followed by filtration and plating, and plate cultivation and colony counting. The full process will now be described. Next will be the lab demonstration and procedure. First, we will complete the serial dilutions. We have two samples, primary effluent wastewater, labeled as sample A, and river water, labeled as sample B. We know there are many disease-causing organisms in the effluent wastewater, so we conduct serial dilution for this sample. Mix sample A well, then take 10 ml sample, transfer it into a bottle with 90 ml of dilution solution and mix it. This is the 10 times dilution sample. Now, take a 10 ml sample from the 10 times dilution bottle and transfer it to a second bottle with 90 ml dilution solution to complete the second 10 times dilution. This one is 100 times dilution solution. Similarly, we can make 1,000 times dilution solution and even more dilutions. In today's work, we only need three dilutions up to 1,000 times. When starting the filtration, we always start with the most diluted sample. Take 1 ml sample from the 1000 times dilution sample bottle and transfer it to a bottle with 30 ml of dilution solution. Repeat this as you will need to prepare two bottles of each dilution sample in order to have duplicate data. Take four saps and dip them in an alcohol solution. 
Ignite the alcohol burner and hover the forceps over the burner. This process is done to sterilize the forceps. After cooling down, use the forceps to take the filter membrane from the sterile package and then put the filter paper on the filter unit. Make sure that the grid side of the filter paper is up. Pour the 30 ml sample solution from earlier into the filter cup and start the vacuum to begin filtering. Pour in about 20 ml of washing solution to wash the wall and make sure all cells are on the membrane. Sterilize the forceps once again and use it to take the filter membrane from the filter unit. Place it carefully on the agar plate, grid side facing up. Carefully use the forceps to press the membrane into place in the dish to make sure the whole membrane touches the agar with no gap in between. Label a plate with the sample name, dilution, and group ID on the bottom. You will need to repeat this process and make two plates for each dilution sample that was previously created. For sample B, instead of performing serial dilution, simply measure 100 ml of the river water using the sterile graduated cylinder and repeat the filtration from the previous steps using another filter unit. Again, place the membrane in the agar plate. Put all plates upside down in a tray and transfer them to a 35 degrees Celsius incubator to cultivate them for 24 hours. The cells will grow into colonies as they feed on the agar over the 24 hour period. Come back the next day and take out the plates from the incubator. Now, count the number of colonies in each plate. Record the counts in your own expanded version of Table 1 as seen here. If there are too many colonies to count, write down too many to count in your logbook. In order to determine the indicator bacteria concentration in colony forming units per 100 ml, use the equation seen here and record the value in your table. That concludes lab number two, sanitary microbiology. In this video, we show you the membrane filter technique and the serial dilution technique. The serial dilution technique shows its importance in determining the number of indicator bacteria in primary wastewater effluent where indicator bacteria concentration is very high and cannot be directly analyzed. Note that this technique can also be applied to do chemical analysis. If a sample has a very high concentration and cannot be analyzed directly, you can perform serial dilution as well.